What's this? What are you doing? Hello. How do you feel? Where am I? In hospital. You had an accident and I had to do an operation. But there's nothing to worry about, Mr. Gill. What? All's well. I had an accident. Don't you remember? Yes. Dimly. What's the reason? We just want to read your thoughts for a moment. Read my? Yes. There was a bit of pressure near the brain and I had to remove it. I see. I'm sure your little grey cells are all working perfectly normally, but we always do a post-operative check. Your wife's been in this again. My wife? She'll be back later this evening. How long have I been unconscious? Roughly 48 hours. You were brought in Tuesday night. Brought in? By ambulance, you mean? Yes. Your friend drove you here. After the other car knocked you down. Oh, yes. The other car. Dr. Barat. Did you test the CG machine? Yes. Well, take a look at the graph. It's not showing any response. But he's been talking, asking questions, getting answers. But there must be something wrong. It's impossible. Is it? Why do you look like that? Is this some brain condition you know about? Perhaps it is. Nasty shock to hear that Dr. Poulsen's been killed. Electrocuted, you say? Yes, but it was murder. Murder? I knew the person responsible. Well, who was it? My brother Frank. He's dead now too, but before he died, I managed with Poulsen's help to find that he'd undergone a brain change. The same unemotional mind? Unemotional, amoral, cold-blooded. You say you've come across another case? Yes, I came up to London to compare this graph. Uh, same pattern. Or utter lack of pattern. Whose graph is it? No, it's a patient of mine. His name's Gill. What do you know about him? A little, really. Seems he was getting out of a car in the dark and was mown down by a passing vehicle, which passed right on. A friend brought him into casualty. Who was the friend? Oh, I have no idea. He simply gave Gill's name to the night staff and then left. It was rather odd, wasn't it, with Gill being seriously injured? Yeah, well, the friend seems to have been a bit odd altogether. He took all Gill's things, his wallet and so on, for safekeeping. There's something else. Didn't bother me before, but it does now. His injury. What about it? Cranial fracture only. No scratches or bruises. Well, I suppose he could have been hit by the leading edge of the other vehicle, a, a lorry, perhaps. But people who are knocked down like that usually have other marks. So that even before you made the brain test, your patient was already a mystery man? Well, not altogether. He does have a wife. Lovely. Just what I needed. Thank you. Dr. Bura, what a lovely story. Has William, the operation appears to have been a success, Mrs. Gill. Well, they told me when I phoned that he'd come round. Is he all right now? Could I go in? Oh, not for a moment. We had to give him another sedative. But you shouldn't have to wait long. Oh, good. Uh, Dr. Bura, will you make sure that um, machine is switched on? patient wheezing away on the table, but these listening gadgets are downright eerie. You know, Elliot, I don't think I ought to go through with this. It's eavesdropping. What do you have to gain by it? Oh, I don't know, but Gil might drop something in conversation. Look, have you been after these people since you heard about your brother? Yes. Well, why haven't you reported the facts to the authorities? Well, now that you've got a brainwashed patient in your hospital, perhaps it's the right time to report it officially. I must say it's a frightening theory. They're frightening people. It's not a theory, Mr. Hippo. Oh, no, I mean about this this thing about them being got at through signals by, by means of their ears. You could prove it with guilt. Huh? Why am up to a brain machine? Feel in a high-frequency signal. Then you get a reaction on your graph. Oh, I couldn't do that, not with a patient recovering from an operation. No. No, I suppose not. Look, are you saying that this man and others have been taken over by some power in space? Whoever it is, they're out to destroy our social structure by undermining men's trust in each other. 
Well, it's probably a long-term plan, stretching years ahead. Oh, sort of um, cosmic directed commando. <coughs> Just get you organized and then your wife will come in. Mm, I'm not surprised you haven't reported it. <laughs> no one in Whitehall's going to believe it. Oh, there's one top man who does, Professor Randolph. Randolph? The mathematician of the university? Yes, do you know him? Well, I know of him, naturally. Well, he's convinced. This should really make his weekend for him. In the local hospital? Sure, it's with him now. Well, how on earth did you manage to get onto this man? Uh, what's his name? Gil. Well, the brain specialist Hepworth who operated told you. Stoke of luck, though. Yes, it certainly was. And all because of an ordinary accident. Well, even our undermined friends aren't safe on the roads. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. You haven't given this an airing for a long time, have you? No, too busy. You know, for once we aren't chasing an unrecognized enemy. Yes, he can be followed when he leaves the hospital. Well, he can be followed up while he's still there. Perhaps we'll get a lead on some of the others. Yes, what about this person who took Gill into the hospital? You may just have been an ordinary, unsuspecting friend. Anyway, let's forget about it till Drew gets here. You know, I've uh, often wondered about professorial pads. Well, it's, uh, it's not such a bad pad. Women frowned upon myself. Uh, women are uh, looked upon with varying expressions, depending how attractive they are. Bliss, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so peaceful. Never think anything sinister was going on. Well, not here, I hope. Outside. All over the country. You know, sometimes I think I'm just dreaming, rather having a prolonged nightmare. You've, uh, you've not got over your husband's death yet. Oh, hardly, with what we've been through since. I wish sometimes I lived in quieter surroundings, like this. Is that a proposal? Hey, what's this? Science or science fiction? The first faltering steps of a new novel. And anybody who dares to lay eyes on that muddled draft loses their hair, their teeth, their taste buds. Thanks, I'll have another drink. Thank you for bringing these things. I popped in two or three books. I hope you mm. like them. I shan't read much. Mm. You like to smoke in here? I think so. I don't feel like smoking. Oh. You mind if I light one up? Go ahead. I heard all about the accident. The doctor seemed very kind. Did your head hurt? Only if I move it. Did they tell you how long I'd have to stay in here? Oh, a few weeks at least. You'll probably be moved to the convalescent hospital on the other side of town. I hear it's a nice place. I'd rather convalesce privately. Yes, but you don't want to take risks. You don't look at all like I expected you to. No? How did you think I'd look? Bandaged up to the eyeball? Oh, oh never mind. You're here and I'm all in one piece. How's the house? It's all right. It's a bit empty on my own. Oh, well. It won't be long now. Not more than ten days if I have my way. Well... Anything else I can bring you? No, I don't think there's anything special I need. The sweets, fruit, newspapers. You could get me the local paper. All right, I will. When will you be back? Oh, I'll be coming in to see you every day. Well, I'll be off now. <laughs> Hope you get a good night's rest. Bye. Bye. Not one word. A boring twosome. I suppose Gil was still a bit dopey. They talked like that for 20 minutes, and neither of them used first names. It sounds as though they've been married for quite a while. Or else they've become strangers. That's Frank and I. Yes. I think it shows clearly that Gil was brainwashed, as if that graph didn't. How much more do you know about Gil? Oh, just that he's retired, an ex-civil servant from Nairobi, lives in a ramshackle farmhouse. It doesn't sound much of a danger to anyone. No. But there's Hepworth's view of his injury. 
What about it? He says it could have been caused by something other than a car accident. But you mean that Gil didn't get his skull fractured on the road? What about his friend? His friend quickly disappeared. Why? Oh, well, perhaps he was in a hurry to tell the man's wife. Well, he wasn't in a hurry to come back and see Gil. No. He could have been with another of his own kind. They could have been engaged in an undermined activity. We haven't heard of anything. Well, it could have been a long way away. On the other hand, he did ask specially for the local paper. Yes, of course, it never occurred to me before. When was Gil admitted to hospital? Tuesday night. Aye, well, I think I know what he was looking for in the local paper. On Tuesday night, we had a break-in at Kimberley Vale. That's the radio telescope site, isn't it? Yes, that's where I'm doing most of my research. What happened? Two men broke in. One of my assistants, Tubby Chalmers, who was the only person on duty that night, fought with one of the men and knocked him down a flight of stairs. But the other man got Tubby from behind. What were they after? They stole some vital government recording equipment. It was kept in a special blockhouse. Now, that's why it never got into the local papers. And neither I nor my assistants had anything to do with this equipment because it wasn't connected with our work. I'm, uh, I'm not even supposed to know what its function is. But you do? A uh, short time ago, this country put up some small satellites, very hush-hush affairs, for monitoring broadcasts from every nation in the world without a chance of interference. Like poking a microphone through a skylight. <laughs> yes, exactly. All fed back into two small black boxes on a secret wavelength. Every so often, the ministry boys used to come down and take the stuff away. Only they had the combination of the blockhouse door. And nobody knows how the thieves managed to get it open. Well. Now we can make a pretty good guess what Gill was up to. And it wasn't enjoying a quiet retirement in the English countryside. about your husband? Well, what about him? Is he all right? Are you from the hospital? Oh, yes, yes it's coming along nicely. Uh, I'm an almoner. A what? We look after patients' social welfare. Oh, well, it's a bit early for that sort of thing, isn't it? Well, we like to make preliminary inquiries. Inquiries? Yes, you know, home circumstances, how the patient can best be helped, what may be involved, and so on. Oh, well, you better come in. Thank you. Have a seat, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Harris. What's he called? Mr. Balfrey. Well, that's a character from a play, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I used to be on the stage at one time. I think he's missing William. He pines for him. Your husband's fond of animals? Oh, very. Well, now, let's have a bit of home background. Mr. Gill's retired? Yes. I see. Now, uh, perhaps you could tell me something, um, how long you've been married, something about your own state of health, um, husband's hobbies and so on. You need to have all that? Let's help. Oh. Well, we've been married 22 years. I'm in excellent health, and William likes walking. But not farming? No. No, we don't farm. Like a cup of tea? Oh, thank you. Is something wrong with the gas? Oh, it's been disconnected. It isn't working for the moment. Look, Mrs. Gill, you can be frank with me. Isn't your husband's pension enough? Well, we do have a bit of a struggle now and then, but we live quite simply. Actually, William's due for a small legacy soon. Five hundred pounds, as a matter of fact. There. Just made it. I must remember to put out a note for the milkman. Do you take sugar? I uh, know, thank you. Mrs. Gill? Well? Has your dog been unwell? Oh, why do you ask? Why, oh, I mean, he hasn't had any trouble with his ears. His ears? Hmm. No, uh, dogs are sometimes affected by whining noises. Sounds pitched at a high frequency. Well, humans can be affected in the same way. Your husband, for instance, he uh, hasn't complained about his hearing. I thought you said you were an almoner. You sound more like a doctor to me. Comfortable, Miss Gill? Yes, thank you. Good. Now, I'm just going to give you another injection, but you won't feel a thing. I don't want to be disturbed, Dr. Virat. 
Can I help you with anything, Mr. Hepworth? Uh, what are you doing? Um, something, something new. Now, will you please leave me and make sure that a sign is left on the door? Just as you wish, Mr. Hepworth. Can you hear me, Mr. Gill? Yeah. Mr. Gill? Who? Oh. Listen. Listen, Mr. Gill. Do you feel a sense of freedom? You're free to talk to me. Free? Yourself. You want to be yourself, and you can be. Because the part of your brain which has ruled you for the past few months has been put to sleep. I have put it to sleep. Do you understand? Now, you are going to tell me about this other, other self. You are going to tell me who rules you, Mr. Gill? Well, there we are. That's where the black boxes were kept. I wonder why they were stolen. Oh, maybe to blow up some kind of international scandal to kick Britain in the guts by making everybody hate us. Eh? Ah, here's Chalmers, who knocked our friend down the stairs here. Now, how's your head today, Tubby? Ah, good. Can he hear? This man you fought with, can you describe him? They struggled in the dark, and he didn't get a good look at his face. Right, I see. Thank you, Tubby. I'll explain that later. Yes, I do go and check the vibrators. Thank you. We'll see you later. What did he say? He said the man was wearing a hat which he thinks fell off when he went down the stairs here. But the other man coshed Tubby just at that moment. No, the security men found any blood on these steps. You know, I don't believe they did. Well, that's rather odd, isn't it, for the man with a fractured skull, unless they'd mopped it up. Yes, well, you know, Drew, we're not, uh, we're not 100 percent certain that Gill was the man. Virtually, sir. All right, well, now that you're here, have a look at the works. There's a stronger force, another intellect, much greater than yours, than mine. I mean stronger and more durable. With no sense of time. Time? We don't die. Biologically or spiritually? I can't tell you. Yes, you can. You were asked to carry out some kind of program. Now, why? What's the end result? I don't have any guilt. That's because you haven't felt any. But you do now, don't you? I don't know. Yes. Then share it. Explain it. You're a human being just like any other. What makes you behave differently? Who makes you think differently? Tell me. Some dish. <laughs> Our begging bowl. We oh, never seem to manage to catch enough money from the ministry. <laughs> Now, this is where you play Christopher Columbus in space. Uh, it's getting to be like our own backyard. You never know who's lurking around up there. No. There's an awful lot of space to cover. And uh, billions of light years. You believe those signals come from up there? Have you got any ideas yet about the source? A few, a few, but this kind of research takes time. And we don't have a billion light years. Hmm. For all we know, they could be sending out other signals to brainwash more people. Do you think the Ministry ought to be told now? About the equipment, for instance? The only person I trust with the information at this moment is out of the country, Henry Bracewell, the undersecretary. He's on holiday in Greece. For me? Hello. Harriet, Hepworth here. Yes, what is it? I've been carrying out an experiment on Gill. Well, what sort of experiment? Be careful. Uh, that's all right. Personnel selection may be your business, Mr. Harriet, but the brain's mine. Yes, yes, go on. Well, I, c I can't go into details now, but the point is I've managed to anaesthetize, as it were, part of his mind, releasing the rest, with some surprising results. What? You managed to de-brainwash him? Well, not entirely, but he, mani he told me enough to convince me that you were right about this, um, this space thing. And I found out one or two rather surprising things about him. My God, can you make him talk again in the same way? Well, I can try. Uh, can you be here in half an hour? Oh, I I've got to pick up my sister-in-law. Uh, I can be there in an hour. Good. See you then. Right. Give us talked. Hepworth's found a way of loosening his mind. Uh, 
See, they'll be able to cope with your husband being well rather weak for a time. Oh, yes. Don't be able. Your husband has a number of friends. People who come in to cheer him up. Yes, one or two. And I suppose that includes the man that took him to the hospital, Mr. Um... Do you know, I can't remember what his name was. He just rang up and told me about the accident. I assume it was someone William met when he was out. At a pub, perhaps. Which pub? Well, I don't know. I don't think William had a local. I see. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Gill. All right. You haven't got a car? Uh, no, someone's picking me up in the village. Oh, well, if you're walking, there's a shortcut. Turn right instead of left, and then take the lane that runs off beside the post box. before I realised I was making it the wrong village. Well, anyone would be overwrought married to a man in, he in Hepworth's, in Gill's condition. Now, I'd better find Hepworth. Are you looking for Mr. Hepworth? Yes, is he with Mr. Gill? I don't know, but you can go along and take a look if you like. Number eight. Thank you. Better try at reception. After three, we were discussing a difficult operation on tomorrow's theatre list. Mr. Harriet, why should anyone want to murder him? Could it have been Gill? Oh, impossible. He hardly had the strength to reach out of bed. But he got out of the hospital. But he couldn't have done the stabbing. Mr. Gill needs only one blow on the back of the head and he will be dead also. Must have been the man who asked to see Mr. Gill. What man? The person who first brought him here. Did you yourself see this man? Oh, no, I was busy. Well, a house doctor is wanted in ten places at the same time. Well, then how do you know he was Gill's friend? He rang Mr. Hepworth while I was in the office. Although it wasn't official visiting hours, Mr. Hepworth agreed to allow him in. Indeed, I think he wanted to see the man. Yes, I dare say he did. You know, I don't understand how Gill, Gill managed to leave the hospital unnoticed. See for yourselves, it's a busy place. I know about the weird brain graph. You do? Not even a Buddhist in a trance could achieve that. You're right. Mr. Hepworth was doing some special tests on the patient. Yes, I know. He phoned me. Someone else got here first. Well, thank you, Dr. Barak. If I hear of anything else, I'll let you know. I just don't understand. Mrs. Gill, for example, she seemed such a nice woman. I felt sorry for her. Dr. Borath wanted in casualty. Dr. Borath, please. Would you excuse me, please? Cold Comfort Farm and how? We've been fooled. So has the hospital. I'd say the Gills never did live here. If the name is Gill, come to that. Oh, everything's been fate. Story about the car accident, his loving wife, the lot. I don't think she was fooled. Oh, very likely. Their bedside conversation would make a lot more sense. You don't suppose Mrs. Gill's an undermine too? Maybe. 
I'll go take a look upstairs. They haven't been used for months. Yeah, the furniture you saw was probably hired. I hustled it out quickly enough. Uh, Master and Barley, I want to inquire about Salt Marsh Farm. I gather it's up to let unfurnished. Yes. How long has it been untenanted? Several months. I see. Oh, uh, my name's Smith. No, I, I want to think about it. I'll be in touch, thank you. Well, that takes care of that. They didn't exist. A cloud of dust. Is it true? It's true, there's a new script here. Someone's been writing with a ballpoint pen. Virginia Stillbeam. Look, you don't suppose that's Mrs. Gill's real name, do you? Oh, whatever it is, it doesn't help us much. Come on. You know, Drew, she seems such a warm person. I, I can't imagine her having their sort of mind. Well, she's probably just part of the furniture, too. time here. You must be a bit cracked. And I don't just mean your head. Never you mind. <laughs> Leaving hospital only a few days after what you had done. Maybe part of some clever scheme, but honestly, I don't think you've got any brains at all. Yes, your marriage allowance. Cash? I wouldn't want to pay tax. Not a poor, separated wife. Styles, still go, still, still yard. There's no still beam. Are you sure? Mm. Well, maybe it wasn't a very locally. Mrs. Gill could have been phoning up a friend in John O'Groats or East Africa. I can't do that. So I bet neither of them were ever near Nairobi. Oh, these people move fast. Yeah, instant removals, people included. The uh, brain specialist was dead when you got to the hospital, eh? He had a scalpel between the shoulder blades. Yes, we'd have been there sooner if that woman hadn't given me the wrong direction. Deliberately, do you think? Well, it's possible. So we don't know what Hepworth learned from his patient. Professor Randolph. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Yes? I see. Right, thank you. Well, we had another Ministry security boy hovering about the place. The missing black boxes? I imagine so, yes. What are you going to say? For the moment, I know nothing. Well, look at this thing logically, Drew. If I put them onto this, you and Anne would probably finish up as the chief suspects. It's happened before. <laughs> Back in a moment. If only Hepworth had spilled more of it over the phone, we might at least know who Gill really is. Or who his mysterious friend is. Well, where we can find Virginia Stilby. Virginia Stilby? Yes. That's the title of the play the local rep company are doing. It opens tonight. If Bill wants me, he can have me. I feel nothing. He'll be here in ten minutes. And you can tell Father when he gets back that I couldn't even wait. Your pay packet, Mrs. Gill. My what? 
You wouldn't get this much playing Joan of Arc in the West End. Come on, get out or I'll call the doorkeeper. On the other hand, you might earn this sort of money playing someone's wife for a few days. Miss Pritchett. My, but you do have a lot of names. Who are you? I want to know who Mr. Gill is, where he is. I don't know what you're talking about. Who organized the farm? Farm? What farm? I live in Diggs, 4 Middleton Street. I'm a professional actress and you're cluttering up my dressing room. Furthermore, you're wearing a green tie and it's considered bad luck. Your bad luck was using a ballpoint pen. Miss Pritchett, please. You'll have to excuse me. Someone paid you to pose as Gill. Someone hired you along with the furniture. Who was it? I had to be on stage in a few minutes. I'm sorry, I can't help you. Did you know Kepworth was murdered? You murdered. could have done it. Me? Look, I had no idea they'd do anything like that. They? Who's they? Who was Gil? I never knew his real name. I was simply asked to pretend to be his wife and to stay at the farm for a few days. Who organized it? Someone left a note here offering me a hundred pounds. Fifty in advance. No questions to be asked. You never met anyone apart from Gil? No. I was given written instructions what to say and do. Where's Gil now? I've no idea. Well, you, you could try the farm. Are you going to tell the police about me? If I were you, I'd join another rep company. Fast. It said it was urgent. Has Mr. Gill been traced? No, I'm afraid not. But I've been doing some checking about the night he arrived in hospital. And you found something out? These were left in casualty the same night. String gloves? They weren't Gill's because he already had a pair. And the only other case admitted was a woman. Well, these obviously belong to a man. Someone with quite long fingers. Well, they don't help much. There's no tag or anything. No. But I discovered something else. You remember I told you the nurse who was on duty couldn't recall a single thing about the man who brought Gil in? Yes. Well, I tried her again. I thought she might just remember something that he said. Any luck? It appears that he hardly spoke at all. He just mumbled something when they first appeared and then wrote down the details of Gil's name, cause of injury and so But do you still have the form? I'm afraid it was thrown away afterwards. But it has occurred to me that he may have deliberately avoided speaking. Perhaps he had a distinctive kind of voice, one that couldn't be disguised. Or well, no voice at all. Ah, that's promising. We should get even better results after we track tomorrow's orbit. Right, thank you. Ah, Anne, any news? Do you recognize these? No, why should I? Well, could they be your assistants? Puppies? Yes, where is he? He's just gone off duty. Now look, what is all this? We know he can't speak, but just how special is his hearing? Anne, you're not suggesting that's Suppose there wasn't any fight the night you had the break-in. Gil could have slipped on the stairs carrying the ministry boxes. here to see you. He was to meet me half an hour ago. Where did he go? I think they went to the farm.
through. Come through. Are you all right? Oh. Just about. Oh. How on earth did you get here? Well, I went to the theatre when you didn't turn up. I was... The boxes. livelier than I would with my skull bashed in. <laughs> Do you think it could have been, Gil? Well, he must still have been pretty weak, but it doesn't take too much effort to work one of those things. It might have been Tubby Chalmers. He could easily have driven to the farm. Yes. How much do you know about Chalmers? Well, not a lot. He hasn't been with me very long. I, I think I've got a file on him here somewhere. Yes, there we are. Perhaps that nurse would recognize this photograph. Now, uh, what do you think? Could Chalmers be an undermined? Well, he's dour, he's withdrawn, but people with his kind of handicap very often are. Yes, but it's an ideal cover for a personality change. Where was Chalmers? Was he missing when Hepworth was killed? I don't know, Drew. I was back here in college myself, but uh, well, Tubby could easily have left the site without anybody knowing. We're a pretty easy-going bunch. He overheard the phone call I had with Hepworth. Yes, you're right, he did. What I don't understand is why those boxes or their contents aren't already on their way somewhere else. I mean, if the idea was to discredit Britain for monitoring world broadcasts, why wait? Well, their plans were probably upset by Gill's injury. Ah, well, in any case, the stuff's back at uh, Kimberley Vale now, and Bracewell, the undersecretary I was telling you about, is on his way down. I thought he was on holiday. Yes, I, uh, I telephoned Whitehall and discovered that he was back. Now, he's a man that we can trust, and naturally he's got to know about the return of the boxes. And in my opinion, Drew, it's time that we presented our case over the rest of this business. Look, Val's right. The whole thing's getting worse. We need ministry help. There are too many enemies. I'll take a good look. Well, I don't remember very clearly, but he isn't the man who came in with Gill. You're quite sure? Pretty sure, Doctor. All right. Thank you, nurse. But she hasn't exactly got 20-20 vision. If you like, we could show this picture around the rest of the staff. You'll never know. Oh, this is Professor Randolph here. I'm expecting Mr. Henry Bracewell from the Ministry at any moment now. Oh, that's right, yes. Would you pass him through, please, and show him straight here to the control room? Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Have you been exploring these? No, oh, hi. One of the tapes. You mean you didn't put this one off? Oh, I did not. Then who did? Well, somebody else must have been in here. Tubby. Can we hear this? Yes, I think so. At an unusual speed, of course, maybe thousands of words compressed into seconds. You mean uh, some kind of scrambling? Yes, possibly. How? Do you think these words, these word compressions, these signals, could be something else? Undermined. I'm afraid we're out of luck, Mrs. Harriet. Well, thanks for trying. Dr. Barat. What is it, nurse? That man in the picture. Yes. He's here. He's what? Here. Where? He's just been brought in. Hit and run driver. He was found at the side of the road. Possible internal injuries, multiple fractures. Look, can I talk to him? Well, only for a moment. We must get him to X-ray. Mr. Chalmers, who knocked you down? <laughs> Why did they do it? 
could be an artificial source. Well, it's possible. It's possible. It certainly has a, a curious quality that I've never come across before. Well, at least you aren't as damn cautious as your colleagues often are. Colleagues? <laughs> yes. Well, of course, you know more than they do. I just hope this man of yours from the Ministry isn't too much of a skeptic. Oh, no, no, not Henry Bracewell. He laps up my books, anyhow. You know, if these were undermined signals, it would explain why the boxes were stolen. They might have picked up a broadcast they weren't meant to. Chalmers found out about it and had to get them. What are you trying? To, has it ever occurred to you that just as there may be life in space, so that there may also be an entirely different means of communication? Well, sounds in place of language? Yes. Well, how could people in Britain be brainwashed by sounds that don't talk to them? Well, it might be something to do with the intensity, with how powerful the sounds are. Concentrated. Like a laser does light waves? Exactly, with the impulses forming some kind of rhythm or pattern. Bypassing the brain into the subconscious? It's possible. Oh, but if they're that kind of signal, why aren't we being brainwashed right now? Because these signals may simply be a further message beamed in this direction to the people who are already tuned in. I'm sorry if I startled you, young lady. Brace was the name. Looking for the light switch, are you? You must be the gentleman Professor Randolph asked to come down from London. That's right. After you. Working late, aren't you? Oh, I don't actually work here. Mr. Bracewell's here. Listen to it wasn't Abby Chalmers. I've just left him at the hospital. In... What's the matter? Come in, Henry. You're Henry Bracewell? That's right. From the Ministry. He's also Gill. Oh, yes. Yes. So he is. Now, well, it's not possible. You knew who Gill was? Oh, but of course, Henry and I are, um, how did you put it through? Colleagues. Well, I don't believe it, not you. But why not? Well, you, must, you must be joking, playing some sort of game. Oh, yes, I've, I've had to play a certain kind of game over these last few weeks. You mean you didn't come into this by accident? No, Drew. I did not. Well, you've been quite clever, the pair of you chasing up some of the others. Several traps were laid while I had to remain on the sidelines. You got out of those. But this time, I'm afraid you came a wee bit too near home. It's a pity about those boxes. I had to be a ministry man to have access to the boxes. We had to remove them. A tricky business altogether, if only I hadn't slipped. And you were the mysterious friend in the hospital who wouldn't talk. My Scots accent. It would all have worked out quite nicely, only I didn't know about the brain surgeon and his connection with your brother. Well, I don't believe it. We trusted you. We looked to you for help. You're the last person in the world to do anything like that. One of the first in a new world. Oh my God. You look just the same. Even with a gun in your hand, you look just the same. Now why don't you sit down and relax? I've given orders that we're not to be disturbed. There's enough disturbance already. Mental disturbance. Oh, now come, come, come now, Drew. We're not so very different from you. We have different aims, that's all. After all, you want to destroy us. And we, in our own way, have to destroy all of you, so that we can build up again. The plot of your books must have improved. <laughs> yes. Yes, the last one is all about undermine. It'll be published quite soon, and people will be amused by it. Science fiction. They won't realize that it's actually happening. A whole world crumbling round about them. There'll just be a few headlines in the papers now and then. Nothing special. I hate to think what kind of society your sort will evolve. Oh, well, you'll soon find out. What do you mean? In just a few moments, that telescope will be locked in at exactly the right position. The right position for what? You and I should feel very honored. Look, man, there's no only part of you that can listen as a human being. Don't you feel anything anymore? What are you going to do? Oh, you'll be quite all right. And first, you next. Next? Well, you didn't think I was going to kill you, did you? Well, you're not going to brainwash us, too. But why not? If I die, when you can live on into the future. Don't touch her! Now, there's no need to be alarmed. You won't feel any pain. It'll all be over in just a few seconds, and then we shall all be firm friends once again.
Да. Там. Maybe a lead to some of the others. I still can't believe it. The one person we trusted. Makes me feel quite sick. Anne. What? This is the notes for the book that Val was talking about. What else can they be? Well, don't you see? This isn't just fiction. This amounts to a declaration of intent. <laughs> 